Hello, friends, and welcome to our streaming services. If you're with us on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and subscribe so that you can get notifications when we have new videos. If you're with us here on Zoom, say hello. We'd love to say hello back and get to know you. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's go ahead and head over to our guest book. Give it a sign. Today's sermon is Father's Day with Jim Clip. Appropriate. <laughs> All right, y'all. Workday Wednesdays are back. Uh, Scott, go ahead and show us some pictures of all the great work that they did last week. Um, show up any Wednesday between four and eight o'clock and help spruce up the place. We could use a you know little summer cleaning. <laughs> and um, if you know that you're going to be there, go ahead and contact Rebecca so that she can get you something that you really want to do or that you're really, you know, good for. <laughs> I don't know. Um, otherwise, just go ahead and show up for an eight. They'll even feed you. It's time to talk about reopening our church. I know that many are eager to get back and some are still a little wary about it. So uh, we have a survey for you to go fill out. Go to the link in your e-blast. Um, also, in Talkback might be right here. I don't know. And tell us whether you're ready uh, to go back, what you definitely want to see what do you miss the most if we can only have a few things do you miss coffee do you miss Stevens donuts do you miss the greeters what do you miss go and tell us um, and even what time of morning to go back some of us have gotten a little used to the more flexible schedule some of us like sleeping in a little bit um, so go ahead and fill out the survey let us know what opening the church looks like to you all right, if you haven't yet, go ahead and sign up for a study group for widening the circle of concern. Remember, we all voted on this. We decided it's what's best for us, best for the church, best for the community. Um, so go and do it. The link is in the e-blast. All right, don't forget, after your sur after the service, we have talk back at 1115. That's where we all get together and talk about the service and bounce ideas off each other, really get more out of it. It's just such an amazing time. Uh, you don't have to talk. You can just listen. It's up to you. We also have adult RE at one o'clock every Sunday and UUCOC social hour every Friday at 9 p.m. If you just want, say hey to your friends and hang out a little bit. All right, y'all. It's that time. Hold on to your seats. Get really excited. Just go ahead. Just like let it bubble up because you know it's going to be a good one. And it is. It is. Y'all celebrating a decade with our church. Everybody, happy UUCOC anniversary to Mavis Belial. Yes, Mavis. Happy anniversary. You cannot imagine the church without you. All right, everybody. That's it. I hope that all of you have a very happy Sunday. Bye-bye. Good morning, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff. Thank you for having the curiosity and the courage to join us. Thank you, whoever you are, whatever spiritual tradition, gender, age, race, sexual orientation, or background you may bring to our community. We hope you will find here comfort, connection, challenge, respect, and above all, love. May with the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. And now in Spanish. Que esta luz que ahora encendemos nos inspire a usar nuestros dones y poderes para sanar y no para herir, para ayudar y no para impedir, para bendecir y no para maldecir, para servirte a ti, espíritu de amor, compasión y perdón. Empowering the Fathers of this World by Lorraine Badorf McNeil. Today is Father's Day, a day in which we honor and offer gratitude for our fathers in whatever form or fashion they come into our lives. Biological fathers, stepfathers, adoptive and foster fathers, grandfathers, spiritual fathers, 
and all of the uncles, brothers, and friends who, whether they know it or not, have helped to fill the role of father in someone's life. We are shaped by their presence and their absence and how they choose to act and whether they abstain, what they say, and when they remain silent. Let us remember today and always the impact that these individuals have on us and as a community. Let us also remember that this relationship is not one-sided and that we as a community are called to support and empower the fathers of this world no matter how they came into these roles, and regardless of their relative success or failure. Let us raise up their triumphs and let us have the grace to forgive them of their human failures. Let us love our fathers and each other. Let us worship together. We laugh, we cry, we live, we die, we dance, we sing our song. We need to feel there's something here to which we can belong. We need to feel the freedom just to have some time. child is born among us and we feel a special glow we see time's endless journey as we watch the baby grow we thrill to hear imagination freely rise affirming our covenant to one another. Because we love one another, we honor each individual's spiritual journey. We celebrate life's abundance and service to each other, our community, and the world. We connect with each other in love, respect, and acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. And now in Spanish. ¿Por qué nos amamos uno al otro? Honramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo, celebramos la mudancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y aceptación. Así que hacemos pacto. We share our sorrow with one another, believing that a sorrow shared is a sorrow halved. Today, we also hold in our hearts the shared grief of our hurting planet. 
At this time, we invite you to publicly post your sorrows and prayer requests to our Zoom chat or send those to our Facebook Messenger. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. We also share our joys with one another, believing that a shared joy is a joy doubled. Today, we take special time to celebrate our connection to all life everywhere. Please share your joys publicly in the Zoom chat or send those to our Facebook Messenger or speak those aloud. When Susan called me last month and asked if I could do about five minutes on fatherhood, I was a little reluctant because I felt that I haven't been a father in so long that I wouldn't have much to say, but I agreed to do it. She then called me last week to let me know that I had the full sermon to do because she couldn't get anyone else to agree to talk on the subject. So as I started thinking about it, I realized that I am a father. I'm still a father and will be for the rest of my life. I have been a father since 1970. I may in fact be one of the most experienced fathers in this church. I've been a father for 51 years and a grandfather for 16. I'm the father of two grown men. I've been a temporary father to very many foster children, both boys and girls through the years. I have no idea what long-term fatherhood to a girl would entail, but I'm certain it would involve all sorts of situations that I have never had to experience. 
a mother always has her babies to love. I mean, they're her babies no matter how big or how old they get. But a father's job is to raise his sons to become men and to try and influence what kind of men they become. It is his goal to make them independent to where they don't need us for support. I am proud to say that both of my sons have built a good family, have a solid marriage, and have had the experience of fatherhood. One of my sons has had the added responsibility of having to be a stepfather, which I never had to experience. My other son is the father of a special needs child, which takes the challenge level that I was never called on for. I read many years ago in Reader's Digest that a boy's impression of his father changes as he grows up. From birth to about five years old, dad is a superhuman. He can lift anything, fix anything, and knows everything. The total look of admiration that a young child can give his dad is an ego lift that has to be experienced. Enjoy it when it happens because it doesn't last long. As the boy reaches six years old, he starts to realize that dad does have some limitations, but he loves him anyway. At around 10, he learns that he may know some things better than dad does. At 12, dad starts to be a source of embarrassment. And by the time he turns 15, he would prefer to avoid him completely. From 16 to around 20, he can do everything himself and he doesn't need dad at all for anything. Except of course, for financial help when needed and he will be forever indebted to you literally. At around 21 to 25, he starts to be amazed at how smart dad has become in just the last 10 years. And he begins to ask for advice as he's starting to look at the possibility of becoming a dad himself. And so the cycle continues. In preparing for this talk, I did the typical Google search and looked at the discussion of anybody can be a father, but it takes a real man to be a dad. After a lot of back and forth bantering, it settled down to the fact that most men find fault in how their fathers fathered. They vowed that they will do it all different and be better fathers than their dad ever was. The interesting thing is that their sons, their sons end up saying about the same thing. Whether it's father, dad, pops, the old man, sir, or any of those titles, those of us with kids have this one day a year when we get to be special. Father's Day. It's kind of the, oh yeah, we almost forgot about you holiday. Mother's Day was first observed in 1905 and it was enacted by Congress in 1914. Father's Day did not become official until 1972 when Richard Nixon recognized it. Being a father and what it involved hit me all in one powerful stroke on November 18th, 1970. I had done my best to be a good supportive husband to a pregnant wife, and this is not an easy task. We ran through the checklist of what had to be done and how and when. When she said it was time to go, I very carefully sped to the hospital and tried to go in with her. I was stopped and told that it would be hours before she needed me and that I had to go do all the admission paperwork first. I rushed through this so fast that I doubt if they were able to read anything I had written, and I rushed up to the delivery floor. A nurse stopped me and said, if you want to see your son being bathed, go to that window. Those two words, your son, stopped me cold. I was no longer just a husband, a man, an employee, a son myself. I was a father. My life would be forever different. Exactly four years later, to the day, I got to do it all over again. But this time things had changed. I got to go in with my wife this time and see my second son come into this world. Anyone who gets to witness life beginning realizes that some miracles are real. Fatherhood has changed dramatically over the years as the entire family dynamics has changed. 
woman's liberation and wars greatly changed the structure and dynamics of the f American family. Before World War II, men went to work and women took care of everything else. With the men off to the war, women were called on to fill in the gaps in the workforce. In 1950, dad was the sole breadwinner in 80% of all families, 87% of all families. In 1970, it was only 47% of families, and in 2020, only 28%. With this leveling out in the earning requirement, there's come a larger demand on fathers to chip in on what used to be considered woman's work. Both my sons learned to never use that expression. It was the fastest way in the world to end up in a frilly apron and have dishwashing duties for a week. Dads now get to be involved in more early nurturing process. They change diapers, take the late night feedings, and get to spend more quality time throughout childhood. If you watch any of the old TV sitcoms like Father Knows Best or Leave It to Beaver, you can get an idea of what family life used to be like in the olden days, that many of you call ancient history, and I just call my parenting years. Children all knew the fear-inspiring words of, just wait till your father gets home. This was the mother's best tool after being kept housebound with the little darlings for hours on end. Fathers came home from work, listened attentively to all the problems of the day and then solved them. If it involved playing judge and jury and then meeting out punishment, it was done efficiently and then it was over with. Dad gave his five minutes of time to the family and then went on with his life. The average family only had one car and that was for dad to go to work in. If mom needed to go shopping, it was on foot with a wagon or shopping cart and the children in tow. In 1965, it was estimated that a father spent only two and a half hours a week with his children. In 2016, that figure was up to eight to 10 hours a week spent with the children. I like to think that I spent more time with my family, but looking back, I realized that I spent the majority of my time on my job or traveling for my job. I was a Cub Scout master, got involved in Boy Scouts, and the family went on camping for vacations. I remember running next to my oldest son's bike, holding it up, helping him along, and repeating steer, pedal, balance, steer, pedal, balance, over and over again. And then finally, I had to let go. It is one of many times that a father has to let go. I hope the time that I did spend was quality time, and I can justify all with the fact that my kids turned out all right without too many neuroses or hang-ups. I know that I wasn't always the perfect dad, but then neither was my dad, and according to him, his wasn't either. The biggest problem is the kids don't come with instruction books, and even if they did, dads seldom read instructions. We all do what we think is best, and if whatever we do is done with love, it can't be all that bad. I've always felt that a good sermon should have a good opening and a good closing and not a whole lot, lot in between, but it should always leave you with something to think about. So my closing question is, we have progressed from a time when a man went to work at a job with good benefits and earned enough to support his house, car, and family to a time where a man and his wife both have to work in order to barely support a house, two cars, childcare, health insurance, and a family. Divorce, spousal abuse, mental illness, suicides, mass shootings have all increased in the same time period. Is this really progress? We can discuss this along with any of your dad stories at Talk Back. Please join me after the service. the way
let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and hope, for we are now the keepers of the dream. To make an offering or your pledge, please go to oakcliffuu.org slash donate and follow the links. Thank you. From this we live, de ti o recibo, a ti te doy, así compartimos y vivimos hoy. A Father's Day Prayer by Kirk D. Lodeman Copeland Let us praise those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let us praise those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a good father. Let us praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children, now grown, their love and support. Let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by the neglect and hostility of their children. Let us praise those fathers who, despite divorce, have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has offered healing. Let us praise those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children, but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let us praise those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us praise those fathers who have died, but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now in Spanish. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez. you 
this friendly place. Love